Hi everyone and welcome to my new video. The new year is approaching very soon so it was time for me to set up my new bullet journal for 2024. For my notebook I chose this beautiful maple moon journal from Notebook Therapy which has a very soft velvet cover. If you would like to get this notebook for yourself, you can use my affiliate code TNPUCHO for 10% of your order and I will get a small commission as well at no extra cost to you. I will also leave links to all the other supplies that I used in the description, so definitely check that out. Anyway, let's jump right into my cover page. I like to keep the beginning pages of my bullet journal quite simple and neutral because my monthly themes are usually more colorful. For my cover page this time I decided to draw these simple flowers and leaves and I don't know what these flowers are because I kind of mess them up. <laughs> I wanted to focus on the line art so I wouldn't need to color these drawings that much. So I started off with drawing the main outlines with a 08 size fine liner, if I remember right. I also went for this kind of art window design because I felt like it was simple and would give some structure to this illustration. Drawing the art was definitely a bit of a struggle though because I couldn't use a ruler for it. So I tried to rotate my notebook as much as possible so drawing the lines would be easier as I could keep my wrist in more in the same position. I didn't use a ruler at all so the hand drawn art wouldn't look too wonky but if you want a cleaner look you could definitely use that and some kind of cup or other circular things for drawing the art. After the main outlines were done, I started adding some line shading into the flowers and leaves with a 01 fine liner. I think my biggest tip for doing this is to draw the lines very loosely and quicker than the other outlines so the shading ends up looking more organic. If you are a beginner when it comes to drawing, I think these flowers and leaves would work really well because they are simple to draw and the lines don't have to be very straight or perfect. If you look at the leaves that I drew for example, you can see that they are quite wavy and go a little bit different directions, so they look a little bit more natural I guess. As the flowers look quite delicate, I wanted to add more contrast to this illustration and color the frame black because of that. This was also a good way to touch up the lines and make them look more straight or even. <laughs> I also decided to add some gold lines in the middle of the frame for decorations and you could also use a white gel pen for this if you don't like gold that much. For the colors I decided to use a couple different shades of light brown for the leaves because that looks a little bit more vintage compared to green for example and I wanted to keep the colors more on the neutral side. Green also reminds me of either summer or Christmas, <laughs> so that's also why I didn't want to add that. When I was coloring the leaves and petals, I left some white areas instead of coloring them completely to give a little bit more three-dimensional look, I guess, and this way I didn't have to add any highlights in them later. For the flowers I also used colored pencils to darken them up because I didn't have a good color in my marker collection and you could definitely use just colored pencils for the coloring as well if that's something you prefer. Besides the neutral colors I also wanted to add some of this gold watercolor that I have as I really love how it looked in my previous bullet journal setups and gold is basically a neutral color anyway. <laughs> It's a little bit more yellow toned than the gel pen that I used earlier, so I could have added that on the top of the gel pen, but I'm not that confident on making straight lines with a paintbrush, so I didn't do that. <laughs> anyway, then I decided to do something interesting and cut a dot store from the middle of the page, and I used X-Acto knife for cutting the leaves because that's a little bit more precise. I wanted to add a colored paper behind the dot door so the spread would look a bit more interesting and I ended up choosing this light warm grey color 
which went well with the other colors, but I think a light pink would have worked well too. This Dutch drawer design reminds me a bit of my 2022 November theme and that's actually where I got the inspiration to do this. If this feels too complicated for you, you could definitely skip this step and I think this cover page would have worked well without it too. Especially because I ended up adding more details later. <laughs> I didn't have a clear plan for this cover page or any other spread really. <laughs> so I was just going with the flow and adding things until I felt happy with the end result. For my monthly themes I definitely do more planning beforehand. But as this setup was quite simple, I felt like I didn't need to test out the different colors I wanted to use, for example. As you can see, I ended up adding the numbers 24 on the top right corner, and then I decided to add another frame in this page, because I felt like something was missing. I noticed that I should have drawn the vertical lines a bit more far away from each other though, so I was struggling a little bit at this point. After adding the frame, I also started to feel like the numbers looked a bit weird on the top, so I decided to just focus on the page on the left to see how the whole spread would look. I added this book page that I printed to give the spread a bit more texture, and my plan was also to add a pocket here where I could store my grid spacing ruler. By the way, I have posted a separate video about that, so definitely go watch it if you would like to know more about my grid spacing ruler and how to make one. I decided to just use the one I already had in my current journal instead of making a new one this time, so I could save some time. For making the pocket I just used some craft paper and these pockets are really easy to make because you just fold three sides of it so you can glue it down on the page. This time I ended up making quite a long pocket so my grid spacing ruler wouldn't accidentally slide out of it like it has done in the past <laughs> when I made a pocket too small. I also decided to add pieces of old book page on my cover page to cover up those numbers that I didn't like anymore and I like how the book page made this cover feel a bit warmer. At this point I wasn't happy with the cover page though, so on the next day I decided to go to a local art supply store to buy more colored papers I could use, and on that trip I also broke my thumbnail, <laughs> which was very tragic as it now looks super short. <laughs> I felt like the old book page looked too busy with the text and I wanted to add a bit more contrast. So I ended up choosing this dark purple paper that would complement the flowers on the right side. Now looking back, I think the dark grey color would have worked really well too. Anyway, because I couldn't get the old book page off, I just decided to glue the purple paper on top, and luckily the pocket was easy to detach from the page. I don't usually go for dark colors like this, as I prefer light colors, but I really like how the purple color ended up looking on the page, and I don't know, it kind of added a dark academia vibe with the old book page. I still felt like something was missing though, so I decided to add the 2024 numbers on the pocket to tie everything together, and I drew them on this leftover paper that I had, and also decided to cut them out, which was a little bit tricky. I glued the numbers on top of this white paper, so I wouldn't have needed to cut them, but oh well, and at least it was a good way to practice. <laughs> I decided to cut the overlapping pieces of the book page to give this part of the cover spread a bit more structure, and then I also added some details like gold lines around the frame, I guess. This cover page is definitely more bold than what I usually go for, but I really like how it turned out, even though I lost my thumbnail <laughs> and it took a really long time to set up. Anyway, after adding some white highlights in the numbers, my cover was finally done, and now we can move on to the next spread, which is going to be my future log. 
I decided to try out a new layout for this so I cut some Dutch doors so I would have the half of the year in one spread and the rest in the other. I also didn't want to write my future log on the top of the grey paper so I glued one of the Dutch doors on top of that so I would have kind of like a grey frame on this page instead. Instead of writing out the mini calendars by hand, I decided to use these calendar stickers that I made on Procreate and printed on sticker paper. I think you could use something like a Word or Google Docs for this as well though, if you don't have an iPad or Procreate. Because the previous spread was really time consuming, I decided to keep this spread really simple and added just big numbers and a title for the decorations. By the way, this is the first time that I'm using a different layout for my future look, so I'm really excited to see how this will work for me. Because I'm starting an internship in January, I will need a little bit more writing space for planning, so that's why I decided to give this Dutch door layout a try. If you don't know what a future log is, it's basically a place where you can write all the important dates and things to remember before you have made your monthly setup. I usually write things like birthdays and deadlines here, and when I have made my monthly calendar, I transferred those dates in there. I posted a video last year where I show you how I use my bullet journal during the month, so definitely go check that out if you are interested on that. Anyway, I accidentally cut the page too much while I was making the Dutch doors, so if you decide to make them, be really careful, and especially when you are cutting around the notebook's binding. Luckily this wasn't a big problem, I just had to be a little bit more careful when I was erasing the pencil marks, so I wouldn't tear the page accidentally. I also didn't end up cutting my bookmarks this time, which was a bonus. <laughs> anyway, I decided to dedicate this spread for planning my yearly goals and kind of wanted to continue the theme of my cover page, so I added this frame around the header for decorations. I think I should have used a ruler though, because it ended up looking quite all over the place. <laughs> But at least it's clear that this is hand drawn. To add a bit of warmth, I used a gold gel pen for the numbers and also drew some little leaves on the opposite sides of the frame. I don't know yet how I feel about this frame because it's really different from my usual style, but I think it was good that I decided to try out something different. For the actual layout, I wrote some questions like what I would like to achieve in 2024 so it would be easier to decide what my goals are going to be. I divided this into three different sections, which are career, personal and other, but you could also add goals related to finances or relationships in here too. Because writing about goals can feel very serious <laughs> and give me pressure to achieve them, I decided to write out things I would like to do just for fun next year, so I decided to make a bucket list on the right side. I would love to hear what's on your bucket list for 2024, so let me know in the comments. Crocheting and knitting have become my new favorite hobbies this year, so I wrote a couple things related to that in this bucket list. Speaking about crocheting and knitting, I posted a video of my journal setup for that, so definitely go check that out if you haven't seen it yet. I also wrote some things I would like to learn next year, like taking photos with manual settings with my camera and learning to do pull-ups. When I'm setting up a new journal, I always try to think what order I should make the spreads, and I try to include the ones I used the most in the beginning. One of my most used spreads is my plant tracker, which we are making next. Because I have a lot of plants and some of them have different watering schedules, a spread like this is really helpful so I can make sure that my plants are doing well. In this spread I will mark the days when I give water to my plants with a circle and I will add a little dot inside of that if I fertilize the plant as well. 
I have my plant tracker ready to use for 6 months as I cut some Dutch doors and this is really great because I don't have to set this tracker up every month. If plants aren't your thing, you could always use a tracker like this to track your habits instead or maybe symptoms related to menstruation or other health related things. And I think this might be helpful especially if you are dealing with a chronic illness as you might be able to see patterns in your symptoms when you can compare the different months. Anyway, for the decorations I decided to make some simple collages and use this tracing paper technique which works really well with layering. I drew some simple flowers on the tracing paper and then just cut them out so I would have a transparent sticker that would be easy to attach on the top of the collage. And if you do this, make sure to use a glue stick instead of a glue roller for attaching this as glue dries clear and glue roller usually have some kind of glue dots so it would show up. For the finishing touches, I added this gold line under the title and I also used some washi tape for the tabs in the dot store. I bought these washi tapes from paper Monokatari and they came just in time so I was able to use them in this setup and I love how light and neutral these are so they will go well with everything. Next up is my budget tracker where I will write all my social media income so it's easier for me to fill the taxes at the end of the year. I have a section for YouTube AdSense and all the brands I'm affiliated with and I again want to clarify that the BJ in my tracker means bullet journal <laughs> and not what you might think. Anyway, besides the social media income, I have a little section for other income that doesn't fit in the categories above. On the right side, I have a wishlist section where I will write about things I would like to buy in the future and also where to get them and the price of them so I will be a bit more mindful about how I'm spending my money. You could definitely add a section for bills and stuff like that in this budget tracker, but I just look at those on my phone, so I don't feel the need to write them in my bullet journal. I also added a section for gift ideas on the bottom of the spread, so I can brainstorm in advance what to get for my sister on her birthday, for example. For the decorations, I just added a simple flower on the empty bottom right corner and used the same style as in my cover page. Otherwise, I kept this page really simple so it would be functional to use. I wanted to add a little something into it though, so I glued these pieces of grid paper that I had on the left side to give this spread a little bit more structure. I feel like in 2023 I learned how to use these kinds of textures in my bullet journal and I'm definitely going to continue that in 2024 as well. Next we are making a spread where I will write things to check out so if you have any TV show or movie recommendations for example, leave them in the comments so I can write them in here. I went for a similar frame for the headers as in my goals page but this time I made the black parts a little bit thinner, so it wouldn't be as overpowering. I also added some brown lines in this frame to make it look slightly more warm. I also learned from my previous mistakes and decided to use a ruler this time to make the boxes a little bit neater, and I think it made a big difference. For the top of the boxes, I decided to use this gold watercolor instead of a brush pen because I felt like a light brown brush pen wouldn't have worked with the other colors and a light gray would have looked too cold. I have six different sections in this things to check out page which are books, TV shows, movies, music, podcasts and other. I love listening to podcasts or deep dive videos on YouTube when I'm filming as that's a good way to entertain myself without getting distracted. <laughs> One of my recent favorites has been Do We Know Them podcast by Jesse Smiles and Lily Marston and you can find that here on YouTube. 
If you have any favorite podcasts, definitely let me know in the comments as I'm always looking for more things to listen to. On the right side I'm making a page where I can write my favorites of 2024 and I don't really know if them are going to be my favorites though <laughs> as I usually just write all the TV shows and movies I watched in here. This year I've been really into watching anime with my boyfriend and my favorite show has probably been Jojo's Bizarre Adventures because it's so random and entertaining. <laughs> I also rewatched Gilmore Girls as it's the perfect series for the fall season. Usually I also have a section for books in here, but as I didn't really read this year, I faced the reality and left that out as I can just write the books in the other section if I happen to read them. Anyway, next up is my YouTube content planner spread. And I know this is probably not the most relevant spread for everyone, but you could use this kind of layout for hobbies or different work projects instead. I started off by adding this same purple paper on the left side that I used on my cover spread. And for the other decorations I just drew some simple leaves again. As I'm going to be having the internship at the beginning of the year, I need to start planning my video making schedule a little bit better. So I will use a slightly different layout than I did with my previous bullet journal. On the left side of the spread I have some space for writing out video and theme ideas. And I will also write out some questions that you've asked me so I don't forget to answer them. And I will also use these questions to plan out what kind of videos I want to make. Because I wanted to have more writing space to plan out my video making schedule, I decided to glue down this flip out on the right side so I would have more writing space. I just used some washi tape to attach one side of the flip out on the notebook page. And the way this works is that I will have the first three months of the year on the front and the next three months under the flip out. I can also write out some random notes on the empty side of the cardstock if I happen to need even more writing space. This was also a pretty quick spread to set up and I of course finished it off with a gold line under the title. By the way, if there are any specific videos you would like to see from me next year, write them in the comments so I can add them on this spread. And if you have any questions related to this journal setup or anything else really, leave them in the comments as well. Now we are making the last spread in my new bullet journal setup which is going to be when did I last spread. I tried this out in my 2023 bullet journal setup for the first time but didn't really remember to use it so I decided to give it another try but change up the layout a little bit. I have a chart for the months of the year where I can just simply cross off the month when I did a specific task but I might also write the day I did the task in here, we will see. For the tasks, I try to write out things I don't do very often, like chasing the dust back on my vacuum cleaner. And I have also some tasks like changing my pitches that I try to do every two weeks. I also left some empty space on the bottom in case I will need to write some more things in here. I kept the decorations super simple with this spread and just added the same washi tapes that I used on my plant tracker spread and they fit the color scheme perfectly. Now it's time for the final flip through. This was probably the most time consuming new bullet journal setup that I've ever done. But I had really fun with it and enjoyed drawing and decorating the spreads. I would love to hear what you think of this setup so definitely let me know in the comments. And I would also love to hear whether you are going for a simple or decorative setup with your own bullet journal. Let me also know which notebook you are going to be using. Anyway, remember to leave a like and also a moon emoji in the comments if you watch till the end. And I hope you have a lovely holidays and new year, and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!